uh, today we will discuss and, uh, rather than interactive discussion about how to approach a patient with alter level of consciousness or coma. So I am Dr. Kravath from Department of Neurology, DIMC. So uh, just the basic definitions. Consciousness is defined as the state of awareness of self and surrounding. So this is the uh, very uh, brief and simple definition of consciousness. That is the state of awareness of self and surrounding. So what are the con contents of consciousness? So these include the sum of patients are to be intellectual functions. It includes the memory, behavior, um, interaction with the surroundings, judgment, all these things collectively known as cognition and emotions. Emotion includes sensations, uh, images, ideas, all these things. So these are the two parts of uh, consciousness. So intellectual function as well as the emotions. So collectively, they uh, uh, made the patient conscious. So, uh, this is the uh, ascending reticular activating system. This is responsible for the state of alertness and consciousness. So, uh, if we uh, revise our neural anatomy, uh, the ascending reticular fibers, they start from the bones and then they ascend up to the thalamus. So, and then direct connection of these fibers will be optic pathway as well as the auditory impulses and the small fibers they arises from the uh, ascending reticular activating system and they uh, terminate in various part of the cerebral cortex. You can see the radiation to cerebral cortex in the picture which is in purple lines. So this collectively uh, form the reticular a reticular activity system and it is responsible for the state of alertness and consciousness. These terms remind the level of consciousness. So this is the basic anatomy of the uh, reticular activity system which is a major part of the state of consciousness. These are the, some basic definition. Alert or conscious means the appearance of wakefulness, awareness of the self and the Surrounding. Lethargy means mild reduction in alertness. Patient feel, uh, but patient can respond easily. Upturn vision means there is a moderate reduction in alertness. And when you ask a simple question to the patient, so it will take some time for him to or her to respond to simple uh, question. Then more. Uh, uh, Stupor is the uh, deep sleep. The patient can be aroused by vitreous or repetitive painful stimulus, but uh, when the stimulus is stopped, the patient again goes into deep sleep. So, this is known as stupor. So, it is one step severe to uh, uptendation. And the last one is the coma or unconsciousness. So, it is the sleep like appearance. And behaviorally, patient is unresponsive to any, any type of external stimulus, either it is uh, light touch and a painful stimulus. And patient become unarousable, unresponsive, and these are high or low. So, these are the typical features of uh, coma or unconsciousness. So, these are the basic definitions of the level of consciousness or level of arousal. So it's, uh, alert is normal and coma is the uh, worst form of the uh, level of consciousness. So in between these, there is a condition which is known as delirium. So delirium is marked the abnormal mental status and it is because of the severe confusion state. Patient may have visual hallucinations, 
and sometimes delusions are false belief. Complex systemized thing like state and the patient should be out of two contact from the environment or the so there is a complete cut off from the environment and the equipment. So and patient may have visual hallucinations and sometimes auditory hallucinations where patients are very restless and confused in delirious state. So it is again uh, the condition which leads to alter when patient. So what are the common causes of delirium? So delirium can be secondary to toxins, it can be because of metabolic disorder like if someone has chronic kidney disease or chronic liver disease, they may go into delirious state, which is known as hepatic encephalopathy or urinary encephalopathy. If someone has head trauma, road traffic accident, maybe patient has uh, subdural hematoma, extradural hematoma, intracellular hematoma, it can lead to delirious state. And if someone has high grade fever or acute dry illness, it can lead to delirious state. So, uh, how we assess the level of consciousness? So, use of terms other than common stupor to indicate the degree of impairment of consciousness is best described by the use of Glasgow Coma Scale. So, Glasgow Coma Scale is a bedside testing method through which we can easily assess the level of consciousness of any patient. And these are the parts of the Glasgow Coma Scale. So, it includes best eye response, best verbal response, and best motor response. So, total points are 15, and if someone has a glossy power scale of 15 by 15, it means he has a uh, uh, normal state of consciousness. So, uh, the first part is the best eye response, and it has four subparts, like if someone eyes open spontaneously, when you approach the patient and patient uh, open the eyes spontaneously, it means he or she has grade four. Grade three is when you ask any question and then the patient opens the eyes, that is grade three. If the patient opens the eye after giving a painful stimulus like pressure on the inner canthus of the eye or pressure on the uh, Manipuram sternite, and after giving this painful stimulus, the patient open the eye, then it is it is the uh, grade two, and grade one is no eye opening even after giving the light pain or pressure. Then the best response, verbal response. So if the patient oriented and converses normally when you ask the question, patient can uh, give you normal answers. Uh, he actually uh, know where he is, uh, where she is, know about the surroundings, know about the people uh, are attendant. Then it means patient is fully oriented and we see uh, grade five. If you ask some question about the history of the patient, the patient is confused, then it is the grade four. And when you ask any question, a patient gives you inappropriate information use in inappropriate words. Then it is the grade three. Or uh, if the patient is unable to make any sentence or uh, uh, complete sentence, or only produces the incomprehensible sound without any meaningless uh, word, then it is the grade two. And one is no response. The last one is the best motor response. So if someone obeys your command, for example, if you ask the patient to open or close your eyes or lift your arm, I show your tongue, and patient obeys your command, it means it is the uh, six. And if you give some painful stimulus and patient localizes where you gave the painful stimulus, then it is the grade five. If patient withdraws from the pain, for example, if you uh, pinch on the uh, hand of the patient and it withdraws, it means it is the grade four. If you give some painful stimulus like pressure on the manipulative western eye or the inner part of inner canthus of the eye, and patient 
flexes these are around at the uh, elbow joint then it is the inferior tree if the patient extend the arm on painful stimulus and the arm internally rotated by little then it is the great tree or after even giving the painful stimulus patient again flexes no response then it is the great one so flexion in best motor response means patient has this function are abnormality at the level of cerebral cortex and extension on painful stimulus means patient has abnormality at the level of mid brain so the cortical ability are the cerebral ability so these are the uh, parts of glossopharmacy so individual elements as well as the sum of score are important hence the score is expressed in the form of gcs for example if gcs 9 and patient has two points in high four points in verbal response and five three points in motor response and it should be written uh, along with the time so generally coma are classified as severe when the glossy coma scale is less than or equal to 8 moderate when the gcs is between the 9 to 12 and minor if someone has gcs of more than 30 so these are the part of the glossy coma scale and glossy coma scale you can easily assess the mental status and level of consciousness of some uh, patient with altered level of consciousness or unconscious patient and how we are told the patient with uh, altered level of consciousness or even coma so on arrival to emergency room immediate attention to be paid to airway breathing and circulation and uh, establish iv access blood should be drawn for to estimate the glucose when the patient has hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia other by by chemical parameters like uh, serum electrolytes and other tests we will discuss later on and the drug screening test so blood should be drawn for these basic labs after airway breathing circulation and uh, blood sample collection we should give attention to the direct towards the assessment of the patient severity of the coma by long uh, coma uh, scale and diagnostic evaluation as possible information from the relatives paramedics ambulance personnel and bystanders so you can take history from these persons uh, to get any clue about uh, what I, what happened with the patient why he goes into at a level of consciousness are in coma so past medical history is important maybe patient has epilepsy and maybe patient has uh, frequent seizures or status epilepticus maybe patient has diabetes and hypoglycemia and hypoglycemia can lead to uh, at a level of consciousness sometimes patient may have drug overdose patient may take uh, benzodiazepine or any medication in a very large uh, quantity so it can cause uh, decrease level of consciousness careful examination should be done for the trauma requires complete exposure and log and roll examination of the back needle was also be noted so this is the uh, examination which should be done in emergency room and this is the algorithm uh if someone in in came to er with unresponsiveness so we start with the abc air we breathing and circulation and then draw blood for the core abgs electrolytes magnesium calcium and if you are suspecting any toxin or drug overdose and serum ammonia level because it indicates the all these indicate the uh, unnecessary to rule out the metabolic cause of uh, decreased level of consciousness then we should start with the iv dextrose 50% because many patients have hypoglycemia and logs on at fluency to uh, 
NCR2 neutralize the effect of benzodiazepine and opioid analgesics. So, now from given for uh, opioid analgesic toxicity, then prevention for the benzodiazepine. If the patient is unconscious, then you start with this. If the patient uh, not unconscious, then you can think about this pseudocoma or uh, psychiatric illness or psychogenic uh, seizures or psychogenic uh, ultra level of consciousness, which is also known as hysterical attacks. Maybe patient is in logging syndrome. Logging syndrome is not a psychological problem, it is a neurological problem in which there is a uh, abnormality or pathology at the end of the brain step. So that the patient is able to move the uh, upper limb, lower limb, as well as the some of the brain illness. So when the patient can only respond by uh, giving the uh, response by uh, eye movement. So this is known as logging syndrome, but because the patient can understand your command and give you response, uh, through the eye movement, so you can uh, say that this patient is not unconscious, it is he or he is in log in or log in uh, state. Then maybe neurovascular paralysis, if someone has history of the myasthenia or other diseases, can lead to unresponsiveness but not unconscious. So this is the basic analysis. After giving the uh, Dexpose, the lockdown, and fluidity. If the brain cell and other focal cells are present, then you can go for CT scan of brain and rule out the tumor, intracranial hemorrhage, subacnoid hemorrhage, or cerebral infarction. But if the brain stem signs are absent, what are the brain stem signs? Uh, the pupil light effects, gag effects, cup effects, and all the effects. If they are absent, then you can think about diffuse brain dysfunction, maybe it's secondary to metabolism, maybe it's secondary to infection, like uh, encephalitis or sepsis. So then the <coughs> choice for further investigation is go for CT scan first and then the lumbar puncture uh, to see the abnormality in the CSF. So this is the basic algorithm. Uh, to diagnose the to quickly diagnose the patient in emergency room. So after making the uh, provisional diagnosis, if you are suspecting head trauma, then the examination must await adequate stabilization of the neck. Large trauma, the severity of the trauma is essential for subsequent management and. Following this, the particular attention should be paid to the brain stem and motor function. So, again, these all tests will be done in emergency room. You should also check the body temperature of the patient. If the patient has hypothermia, you may suspect maybe it is hypopotetism, hypothyroidism, it may be because of some medicine like chlorothorazine. It will be due to exposure to low temperature environment, cold water emergence, or risk of hypothermia. But uh, this type of low temperature is not very common here in Pakistan. In elderly with inadequate treatment, then exacerbated by immobility. So if patient has low body temperature, hypothermia, then you can suspect all these conditions. If patient has hyperthermia or febrile trauma, then it may be secondary to infective disorder like encephalitis, meningitis, it may be secondary to vascular or subacnoid hemorrhage because uh, the areas which control the body temperature, the neurons, they are situated in the brain cell. So if someone has spontane hemorrhage, then it may lead to hyperthermia, which is known as central hyperthermia. Metabolic causes include toxic and adisonium crisis. It can lead to hyperthermia or increased body temperature. And sun stroke, heat stroke, again, the most common cause of hyperthermia in elderly patients. Form of a secondary 
infections like UTI, pneumonia, and bed sores. Heart can lead to fever and hypertension. So UTI, pneumonia, and bed sores again, is, these are common in elderly patient or in bed bound patient. Then you look for the pulse. If patient has bradycardia, then you may suspect brain fevers, UTIs, or maxillary. If someone has tachycardia, you can think about hyperthyroidism or uremia. If the blood pressure is high, then hypotensive encephalopathy is a condition in which there is a sudden increase in the blood pressure which leads to abnormality in the uh, seminal dysfunction or low BCS. So this is known as hypertensive encephalopathy. When you gradually control the blood pressure, the consciousness level or GCS will become normal. And uh, if patient has low blood pressure, then you can think about some endocrine disorder like Addisonian crisis. If the patient has low blood pressure, we secondary to barbiturate toxicity or alcohol toxicity. So these are the some clues in the uh, vitals uh, through which you can make the provisional diagnosis of trauma. Then skin. Look for the injury, bruises, which indicate some traumatic causes. If patient has dry skin, then you can think about hyperglycemia, diabetic ketosis, or uh, ketogenic poisoning. If patient has moist skin, you can think about hypoglycemia or uh, decreased in your serum glucose. If patient has jerry red skin, you can think about carbon monoxide poisoning. If someone has needle masks, then you can think of drug addiction. Maybe patient take too much uh, at uh, do the addictive drugs. If someone has rashes, then you can think about meningitis or infected endocarditis. So again, the examination of the skin can do some clue about the nature uh, or the cause of the uh, altered level of consciousness. Then you can see the pupils. So, size of the pupil, inequity, reaction to the bright light, all are important. And important generally, most metabolic encephalopathy is given small pupil with preserved light flex. Atropine and several anoxia tend to dilate the pupil. And opioid will constrict them. This is the, uh, uh, this is called just a corner of idea. So these are the people. So if someone has a small reactive pupil, then you can think about lesion at the level of the time symptom. If someone has mid-size fixed pupil, fixed pupils, there is no response to uh, bright light, then you can think lesion at the level of the midbrain. Part of the midbrain is known as sector. Uh, if someone has abnormality or lesion at the level of the tectum, then the pupils are violently dilated and again fixed that way they didn't respond to bright uh, light. Then if someone has ipsilateral dilated fixed pupil, then you can think about uh, lesion in the bones and if someone has a small pinpoint pupil, again, you can think about fontaine infarction, fontaine hemorrhage, because in, uh, but in fontaine hemorrhage, my infarction pupils are the very sluggish, reactive to light, but they are pinpoint. So, through the examination of pupil, you can easily assess the, uh, yeah, easily make the uh, ideas that will should be the region in brain stem or uh, cerebral cortex. So after examining the pupil, you can look for the ocular movement. So the position of the eye address when uh, you open the eyelid and see the position of the eyes addressed. And if whether the presence of the spontaneous eye movement or not. The Reflex responses to oculocephalic reflex, which is also known as doll eye reflex and oculovestibular reflex. In the few central disturbance but intact brain cell function, slow moving eye movements can be observed. Slow moving eye movements means uh, two and four type of movements, 
and it indicates cerebral dysfunction. Frontal lobe lesion may cause deviation of the eye towards the side of vision. So, if the eyes can be critically uh, moves or uh, stay at, uh, for example, at uh, right side, it means the patient has lesion on the frontal lobe on the same side. So, through ocular movement, you can get an idea about uh, what is the cause of altered level of consciousness. So, what is ocular reflex or dolzai reflex? If you rotate the head from side to side and observe the position of the eye, if the eyes move immediately in the opposite direction, it means the brain stem functions are intact and all the response is positive, which is normal. But the response is negative. For example, if we move, move your head, uh, sorry, move the patient's head towards the right side, and the eyes also move towards the right side immediately, it means it is dog's eye negative response, which is again the case that the patient has some dysfunction at the level of brain stem. So, positive dog's eye response uh, indicates that the patient has normal brain stem function. So, this is known as ocular reflex or dog's eye reflex. Then, uh, through the order of breath, if it is sweet smell, then you can think about diabetic acidosis. It is, if it is sweet and viticus, then patient should be in hepatic coma or hepatic encephalopathy. If patient has the serous order, it means the patient has uremic coma or uremic encephalopathy. And if patient has alcohol order, it clearly indicates alcohol intoxication. So, uh, the judgment of the breath is through my practice. So, after seeing many patients, the doctor at the ER can easily assess the odor of the breath. Then look for the pattern of respiration. If someone has seen stroke inspiration, respiration means patient has hyperapnea altered with apneas, that is rapid breathing. Then there is a pause in the breathing for some time and then again rapid shallow breathing. So hyperapnea alternates with apneas. Apneas means pause in the breathing. This commonly found in comatose patient and often the cerebral disease, but it relatively non-specific. Then <laughs> rapid regular respiration is also commonly comatose patient and often found in pneumonia. So again, we can advise the test exam or other investigation to rule out any abnormality of the pulmonary symptom or respiratory system. Then look for the motor function. Particular attention should be directed towards the asymmetry of the core or the core. It means if someone has decreased the seat tone or increased the seat tone and decreased movement or decreased power towards the one side, you can think about some cerebral vascular accident. The planters or webmisky signs are usually extensor, but asymmetry again important because. If patient has bilaterally extensor or upwind planters are bilaterally positive with a meniscus sign, it indicate diffuse cerebral dysfunction. And if someone has asymmetry or only one side is uh, upgoing or meniscus positive, it indicates some vascular phenomena like hemorrhage or infarction. The tendon reflexes are less useful because maybe patient is in shock state, when patient has. Uh, comorbids like diabetes uh, and maybe patients have some uh, comorbids like peripheral neuropathy. So reflexes may be absent if someone has comorbidities like peripheral neuropathy and diabetes. So they are less useful. The motor response to painful stimulus we already discussed and we can easily assist this uh, through the DCS. They are the more most best motor response. It has uh, six uh, elements to discuss. Okay.
okay so uh, these are the uh, part of the pcs that is the best motor response so if the patient following your command it is the grade six if it localizes pain then grade five if the patient is withdrawal then it is the grade four if patient has abnormal flexion at the elbow joint when you give the painful stimulus it is the grade three if the patient has extension and internal rotation of the arm or upper limb after giving the painful stimulus then fix the uh, grade two and no response even after giving the painful stimulus then it is the grade one so abnormal flexion is the decorticate rigidity and abnormal extension is the decorticate response so is again the part of the glossop of the skin then look for the neck in the presence of the trauma to the head associated with trauma to the neck should be assumed until proven otherwise so if someone has history of head trauma uh, you should uh, there is no need to examine the neck because maybe patient has some dislocated vertebra and uh, examination of the neck will lead to uh, patient death so but if there is no history of the head trauma or motor accident you can Look for the positive pelvic sign that is neck stiffness, and also the sign of malnutrition like who uh, uh, is this sign? Then uh, next, so this is important. So this is the who is this sign when you flex the neck, the lower limb flexes at the hip joint and knee joint spontaneously without the will of the patient, and This is the pelvic sign when you extend the leg at knee joint. Patient feels severe pain behind the thigh and throughout the spine. So this is the pelvic sign. Then, then what are the causes of trauma? So trauma is the second to central vascular disease, and the impairment of the perfusion of the Reticular activity system we discussed earlier in the neuroanatomy part. That is the brain stem, especially the pons and the fibers. They extend up to the thalamus. So it makes the ascending reticular activity system, and it has fine fibers which spread from this to throughout the cerebral cortex. <laughs> With hypotension, brain stem herniation can all lead to trauma. And what is the most common cause of brain stem herniation? Is the extra dural hematoma or base reticular herniation? Or if someone has very large intracerebral hemorrhage, can lead to base intracranial pressure and brain stem herniation. So vascular causes are the most common cause of brain stem herniation. The leading cause, leading cause of death below the age of forty-five. Head trauma accounts about half of the trauma deaths. Major cause of patient presenting with trauma. A history is usually available, and if not, sign of injury such as bruising of the skull or skull fracture lead to one or lead to make the diagnosis. So, alcohol on the breath, epileptic seizure. We will discuss earlier on this condition. Systemic infection may result in trauma as an event secondary to metabolic or vascular disturbance or seizure activity. So, if patient is in sepsis, it can lead to septic encephalopathy, even generalized chronic clonic seizures. So, systemic infection like UTI or upper respiratory, or slow respiratory tract infections are common in elderly patients. Direct infection to CMS. If someone has Road trip accident, direct ventricular injury. If someone has ENT infection, which can be spread towards the brain, or if patient has meningitis or encephalitis, all can lead to the altered level of consciousness and even the coma. Then, Okay, then 
meningitis we also usually subacute intense headache associated with the fever and neck stiffness most common cause is meningococcal meningitis and it is rapid in onset usually the patient has stay up few day few days to one week uh, so you can think about some uh, um, cns cause then comma the patient is known to be suffering from the chronic liver disease or chronic liver disease or hepatic coma lead to uh, secondary to hepatic encephalopathy may be going to coma and uh, again if someone has chronic renal disease patient has raised blood urea and kidney or metabolic acidosis can lead to uh, alter uh, level of consciousness and patient may go into coma these are some other condition which can cause alter level of consciousness or even coma that is diabetic ketoacidosis most common patient in patient with insulin dependent diabetes hyperosmolar hyperglycemic non ketotic syndrome this is the new term for the non ketotic hyperosmolar coma so initially uh, this patient has uh, type 2 diabetes and if someone has a very high blood sugar like 400 500 or above patient may go into hyperosmolar hyperglycemic non ketotic syndrome so why it is uh, called non ketotic because uh, ketones are not present in urine in this patient then if someone has low blood glucose like 20 30 so patient may go into hyperglycemic coma and about half an hour is sufficient for the brain cell and neurons to become permanently damaged after hyperglycemic then pituitary uh, failure can lead to uh, altered development of the coma thyroid disorders adrenal cortical failures we discussed at its early crisis drugs poisoning drug abuse and alcohol intoxication all can lead to uh, alter the blood consciousness so these are some other causes at present blood will be taken as we discussed earlier in uh, a logarithm to uh, determine the glucose electrolyte liver function test calcium serum osmolarity and blood arterial blood gases blood should be also stored for subsequent drug screen if needed drug in uh, drug intoxication if some taking too much benzodiazepine or too much of the opioid and digestive or if someone taking uh, some drug abuse drug abuse so these are the some basic investigations following the clinical examination a broad distinct chain between the metabolic cause the reserved nuclear responses and the structural cause of the coma is likely to have been established although most patient with coma will require CT scan, but indeed, all the present persisting coma. Clearly, this is the greater urgency when structural lesion is suspected. So, first investigation of choice is the CT scan, or if available, then MRI brain with contrast before going some invasive procedures like lumbar puncture and CSR examination. Because if someone has base bracket patient and you do the uh, lumbar puncture without uh doing the ct scan or mri brain uh, without properly examining the patient then it can lead to brain stem herniation and patient may die because of brain stem herniation so it is necessary to do the um uh, imaging first and then go for uh invasive procedures in the absence of focal sign but with the evidence of meningitis a lumbar puncture may need to be performed before scanning is a matter of clinical emergency but again uh, it is better to go for uh, ct scan first if mri is not uh, available and if both are not available then you can do the controlled number puncture what is controlled number puncture you can draw only two cc or csf with a very fine needle and this two cc is used to see uh, to uh, diagnose the basic abnormality of the csf 
So we can do the DR CSM detail report by uh, giving the UCC sample of the CSM. So this is known as control number puncture. In other situation, the number puncture should be delayed until after the brain scan because it is half precipitating a pressure cone secondary to several mass regions. So this pressure cone means the brain stem herniation. And we all know that brain stem uh, have the uh, center on neurons which control the vital organs like heart and respiration. So if brain stem herniation occurs, patient will die because of cardiorespiratory failure. So it is better to do imaging first and then number two check. All patients will require chest radiography and ECG detailed investigation of the systemic disease will be directed by the clinical examination. EEG is of value in identifying the occasional patient with subclinical seizures of epilepsy because sometimes patients have subclinical seizures which are not visible, but patient has altered level of function because of subclinical seizures. So EEG is can be helpful when you do the EEG, you can see the generalized chronic, chronic seizure in EEG graph while the patient is unconscious and without having any jerky movement. And it's really very hard in assessing the patient who has admitted following an unsuspected seizure. So EEG has importance, especially uh, in diagnosing the patient with coma and you can easily diagnose the cerebral dysfunction, encephalopathy, and even the brain death by EEG. So how do you manage patient with coma or unconsciousness? So the treatment of the underlying cause, it may be uh, some CNS infection, start with the broad spectrum antibiotics, uh, maybe viral encephalitis, you can start with the cyclovir and supportive treatment if someone has Hyper, uh, if someone has hypertensive and sympathy control, the blood pressure gradually. If someone has a stroke, then many the patients with a stroke. If someone has UTI or respiratory tract infection, then you can manage the infective uh, condition. If someone has metabolic cause like hyperglycemia, hypoglycemia, or Hepatic encephalopathy or renal encephalopathy, IUD encephalopathy, so it should be controlled so the patient can easily manage in this condition. Maintenance of the normal physiology, respiration, circulation, nutrition, which is important because uh, um, nutrition, uh, good nutrition is important. Patient should be nursed on his or her side without a pillow. Attention will be needed to be paid. To the airway. So, usually the unconscious are patients with drowsiness, they have uh, secretion which is stuck in throat. So, regular suctioning of the throat is important because uh, uh, respiratory compromise may occur because of these secretions. So, intubation if the coma is prolonged. If someone has prolonged altered level of consciousness or trauma, then it is necessary to uh, pass the endotracheal tube and intubate the patient. Retention or incontinence are really required. Police catheterization, intravenous fluid is necessary. And if the coma persists, adequate mutation is required. Care of the skin, frequent changing of position, special matters. Avoid urine and stool soiling and put care of bad sores. We call bad sores again the uh, source of the infection and sepsis. So frequent uh, turning of the patient on the bed, physical therapy, rehabilitation are important in management. What is the prognosis? In general, trauma carries a serious, a serious prognosis. This is dependent to a large extent on underlying cause. So if someone has hypoglycemia and <laughs> patient remain untreated for more than 30 minutes, then maybe patient uh, going to irreversible brain damage and leads to alter level of consciousness. If someone has hypoxia or decreased level of oxygen and the patient remain in hypoxic state for more than 5 to 10 minutes, then maybe it is the hypoxic brain damage and it will be irreversible condition. 
trauma due to <coughs> depression drugs carry an excellent prognosis because you can easily give the chelating agent or uh, drugs that neutralizing the uh, effect of depression drugs. So prognosis provided the resuscitative and supportive measure, many uh, measures are available and no anoxia has been sustained because hypoxia and anoxia can lead to irreversible brain damage and irreversible brain damage can easily be diagnosed through the EEG. When you do the EEG, you can see the delta waves which indicates hypoxia or anoxic brain damage. Metabolic causes apart from anoxia carries a better prognosis as the patient has uh, urine can sacrifice. You can advise frequent dialysis, hemodialysis, and when the serum urea can clean, greatly level become normal, the patient regain consciousness. Similarly, if the patient has hepatic coma, you can advise treatment uh, for the hepatic coma and patient can go into uh, patient can uh, be improved after hepatic encephalopathy. If someone has hypoglycemia, you can start with the 50% of the dextrose water. If someone has hyperglycemia, you can start the insulin infusion to control the hyperglycemia. If someone has hypothyroidism, you can start with the uh, thyroxine. So all these metabolic causes can be easily uh, controlled and they have the good prognosis as compared to other causes of them. So this is the uh, uh, general approach to power and some basic uh, investigation and how you make the power. So I think any question you want to ask? Any question? Causes of hypothermia in an elderly patient is the uh, 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 environmental cause. If someone uh, lives in an uh, area where uh, the environmental temperature is very low, like uh, the 8,000 areas here in Pakistan are in Europe and Canada. So, and if someone has poor mobility, so mobility can increase the body temperatures, so poor mobility can lead to hypothermia. So exposure to low temperature environment, 
cold water emergency staff hypothermia and early with inadequate heating tools and the suspected by immobility so these are the sub causes of hypothermia along with if someone has decrease uh the thyroid hormone in the blood or hypopituitarism again these are the causes of hypothermia and glucosamine is one of the drug uh, which can cause hypothermia so these are the some causes of hypothermia so any other question